Hello everybody, Luke Groman, FFTT. Hope you had a great holiday and new year. Happy new year to everybody. Excited to be back uh, in the saddle, if you will. Uh, and so let's jump right in. First question is from BP. As inflation slows and GDP doesn't crater, doesn't a soft landing look increasingly likely? Uh, in my opinion, no. Uh, paradoxically, uh, as inflation slows, it makes it more likely uh, that we get a hard landing. Uh, the, the, the issue ultimately, I think, is, is most market uh, observers are not watching where the problem is going to start, where it has already started, which is at the sovereign level in the West, in the U.S. specifically, since we're the global reserve currency issuer. Uh, I think the Fed's remittances to treasuries, uh, to Treasury that we've seen, right, where it's everything's fine down, is a sign. Uh, that's basically the Fed's P and L. The Fed is basically running a borrow short, lend long book, like a lot of other entities uh, across the globe. Um, it, it, you saw the Fed's remittances; it was a binary change. Everything was great, then it wasn't. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that in the first half of this year. Uh, tax receipts have already begun rolling over. November was down 11%. The comps uh, for the two-year comps for tax receipts get extremely difficult between now and the third quarter of next year. Um, you've got insufficient global but private sector balance sheet to finance U.S. deficits already. So if the deficits get worse by virtue of falling tax receipts, the point here is that things are likely to get uh, much worse, much faster than people think as a result of inflation moderating. Basically, inflation is the branch that Treasury and by extension the Fed were sitting on. And the Fed is hacking it off, hacking that branch off as fast as they can. So uh, it's not going to go well for them in my view. Um, the balance sheet point is a point I made uh, on a couple podcasts late last year, which is since 1995, anytime U.S. federal deficits have been above 20% of global GDP growth, uh, the Fed has been in doing QE. Um, that ha was 100% of the time until 2022, when U.S. deficits were 32% of global GDP growth, uh, and the Fed didn't monetize them, and we saw what happened. Dollar up, treasuries down, stocks down, real estate down, everything else down, gold flat. Uh, if you didn't like 2022 with 32%, uh, U.S. deficits at 32% of global GDP growth. 2023 deficit right now we're annualized at 4Q and 1Q. If you annualize that, the U.S. is set to be 72% of global GDP growth, assuming global GDP growth doesn't fall. Um, and so 2023 is setting up to be 22 on steroids. And, and to me, the leading indicator is inflation's rolling over. So Let's watch and see. Uh, the signs are there, uh, but that's how I think it's going to go. Um, from JP, lots of talk about higher for longer, no pivot. Seems like that can't last. Thoughts on time frame of something breaking to cause a pivot. Debt deficits increase and tax receipts are falling. Uh, yeah, you're seeing, uh, you're seeing commercial real estate. Obviously, we saw the gates right at the end of last year and some big real estate funds. Housing, uh, the, the chief economist of, of the National Association of Realtors said that housing basically froze in a way it hasn't seen since the COVID crisis in November. Uh, but in terms of no pivot, uh, I would argue and say you probably had a bit of a chicken pivot in October and November in the aftermath of the IMF meeting in Washington. If you look and see the dollar went from 114 to 104, for example, uh, there was dollar liquidity from somewhere. Uh, when you look and say where, uh, TGA ran down the balance, okay? So there's one sort of chicken pivot. Uh, reverse repo balances came down a bit, another chicken pivot. So there was some dollar liquidity injected. Uh, it was a chicken pivot that really began mid-October, um, but it wasn't a full pivot and it wasn't fully the Fed and it's not sustainable. So to your point, when does the sort of real show begin uh, after this chicken pivot bought them time into year end? Uh, I think the real show starts in one half 23. Um, again, few people are looking at the risk-free asset as the source of trouble, Western sovereign debt, treasury specifically, but that's where they need to start. Um, it's not different this time. Um, and with debt and deficits where they are, I think we're going to get a binary downtick in the economy as offer side collapses to collapse to bid sides in the borrow short lend long world, broadly speaking. 
Uh, you saw this Blackstone deal they did with uh, the University of California pension system, 11 and a quarter percent guaranteed rate. Um, that's a sign. Um, that's a sign things aren't all hunky dory. So I, I think you get a binary downtick in the economy. I think you get the fiscal deterioration and I think it's gonna happen relatively quickly uh, in a way that surprises people at some point here in the first half. And then we'll see what the Fed wants to do. It'll sort of be a check to them situation. Uh, from NM, MN, would you recommend investing now in money market funds as a vehicle to park cash? Uh, yes, uh, recently moved a portion of my own personal investments into short-term treasuries. Uh, I don't like to short assets in a global sovereign debt crisis because the volatility has been inhumane. I think it's going to get worse. Um, and we have a pretty strong conviction how the game's going to end, which is you want to own risk assets in a global sovereign debt crisis because central banks cannot let the sovereigns uh, become nominally insolvent, go bankrupt, miss coupon payments, etc. So they ultimately do print the money historically. Uh, but uh, volatility in the short run has been inhumane, is likely to remain inhumane. I'm a terrible options trader and I know that about myself, so I just don't play there. Uh, and so when I see heightened risk, uh, I prefer to play it as go to cash and wait. And so that's what part of that incremental move was uh, in terms of moving some uh, of our money into money market funds um, to park and wait and see what happens. Uh, from uh, D, some believe that the wealth effect in housing, not so much stocks, is responsible for propping up the economy this cycle. If so, and housing doesn't correct, how does this affect Fed pivot and recession outlook? Uh, I would say the California experience last year would argue otherwise, uh, going from a $100 billion surplus to a $25 billion deficit in the span of about eight months uh, with stocks. Again, housing hasn't really fallen yet, so that's largely stocks. Uh, and at any rate, in my opinion, housing is going to start to correct probably in the latter part of the first half of this year, maybe more quickly. Again, I point you to North, North, excuse me, the National Association of Realtors Chief Economist, uh, uh, Lawrence Young, saying the market froze, the housing market in the United States froze in November in a way he hadn't seen since the depths of the COVID crisis. Uh, freezing is the first step. What comes after freezing are offer sides collapsing to bid sides. What's the catalyst for that? People need to move. Um, uh, price markdowns can happen for any reason. If, if for no other reason, every every day, whatever it is, 10,000 baby boomers turning 60, uh, that means that 10,000 are also turning 70. Uh, if as they move into uh, care facilities or assisted living uh, or die and their kids get the house, are, are boomers' kids likely to sit on a house and wait for best price? If it's fully owned, are they likely to hit the bid and get the cash? And my guess is you'll start to see, you know, more on the margin, hit the bid, get the cash from the kids. And as that happens, that could prove to be a catalyst. Again, just demographics. So, uh, and once that happens, that's, you know, one, once price is broken in one house, couple transactions, the comparables, the comparables are the comparables. And then if you want to move your place, you got to go to the comparable in a lot of cases, unless liquidity is freed up, unless the Fed pivots. So I, I think, again, it filters into this view that inflation was the branch the Fed and Treasury were sitting on. And <laughs> reduced inflation is going to lead to a, I think, pretty binary uh, slowdown in the economy in the first half of this year. Uh, from ZBD, uh, give us your specific thoughts on the Zoltan pieces last week, please. Uh, in short, I think he's correct. I, th I think he's brilliant. I think he's correct. Uh, it's obviously something FFTT has been writing about for a long time, uh, nearly eight years in terms of gold, oil, China's need to move to yuan pricing of oil um, uh, as a matter of national security. Um, and, and we've been highlighting the ways in which they've been doing that. I do think uh, there are parts um, I would point to within that in terms of the encumbrance of commodities where I think China is much further along than um, than a lot of people think in that process. Um, I also think it's noteworthy, you know, Zoltan is a, is a former Fed Treasury official and he's one of the foremost experts on monetary plumbing in the world. And so uh, I think it's important that uh, someone as as sharp and, and uh, astute as, as Zoltan is and has been historically is highlighting this. So, um, you know, it's something I think that was a very important signpost or mile marker in this process. Uh, from DL, 
Please elaborate on your WTI US dollar SPR tweet uh, in your video. Uh, yeah, I tweeted yesterday highlighting the gap between the SPR, Strategic Petroleum Reserve, uh, which is plummeting almost vertically down, and US WTI, which is West Texas Intermediate Oil, which is holding up uh, after they had followed each other uh, reasonably tightly for the last 32 or 33 years. Uh, my point was that when an emerging market sees its currency weakening versus the dollar while that emerging market's FX reserves are plummeting, it's a sign that the currency is going to weaken markedly versus the dollar. In an EM versus dollar quote, a market usually market weakening would be the currency that currency getting uh, a higher number against the dollar weakening against the dollar uh, in the case of the oil tweet uh, the sign it would be a sign that the oil number uh, is uh, could could rise markedly against the dollar so obviously if the oil um, number rises markedly against the dollar uh, that's a sign oil prices going up against the dollar and then finally from SP, given your 2023 outlook uh, is for the beginning of the end to start this year. <laughs> I don't know if it's the beginning of the end or just a change. I would say it's, it's just a change. These things change uh, with uh, regularity, particularly on the long cycle. So at any rate, what's your year end price target for gold? I, I think gold sets new all time highs at some point in 2023. So. With that, I'm going to finish up for tonight. As always, thank you very much for joining me. If you're interested in more information about updates like this or receiving more updates like this, check out fftt-llc.com for more information about our Tree Rings product, uh, mass market product, as well as institutional research product offerings. And as always, everybody have a great week. I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care.